Hello there, welcome to Craft with Fee. Today I've got a project for you which is absolutely perfect for gift giving. It's also great for craft markets if that's your thing. It is a little magnetic uh, notebook holder. So what it does is it actually holds a little post-it note pack. It's got a flip top there like that. It's on chipboard and it has a magnetic back there like so. So it's really cool, really easy to use. Um, and make it's got a little pencil in there which I've managed to find some pencils that coordinate with the Stampin' Up colors that I use uh, so it's really good it's a great um, little idea and it's very simple to make so let me start off by cutting uh, some chipboard now you can buy chipboard from um, craft stores or you can utilize the chipboard that comes in some of the packaging from Stampin' Up so don't ever throw your packaging away uh, if you're in the Fees Craft Club on Facebook, I'm going to upload a little video in there on what to do with the little white cardboard backings that come in the paper. Um, but this tutorial is for the chipboard. One thing with the chipboard, though, is it will blunt your cutter blade. So you can use an X-Acto knife or a Stanley knife on a craft mat, or you can keep a blade completely separate um, for the job of just doing chipboard which is what I've done um, oh I should also show you I've also made a larger version so I've made a version here that includes a calendar uh, as well as the little notebook so this one's the you know uh, upper market one I suppose you could say this one has it all the other one is just for notes so um, and this has got lots of magnetic strips on the back to hold it because it's quite heavy but today I'm just showing you how to make the shorter one of course the larger one would be just the same but just taller um, so this is the one that we're going to be making. Okay, so now we need to cut our chipboard. Now what I've done with my um, little blade for my cutter, I'll just bring my cutter in, is I have kept one in the packaging um, and I've written on it chipboard so that I know that this is my chipboard cutter because it still cuts the chipboard um, fantastically but it is no good on cardstock or paper once you've cut the chipboard with it really because it's just... It hacks it, um, to be quite honest. So to take the blade out of your cutter is just a simple matter of taking it down to the little section there where it's got a bigger opening and lifting out your blade. And so then we just need to get our chipboard one and we're just going to place that down into the groove and you can hear it just slots straight back in. So it's super easy to do, no big deal. Um, so we're going to cut this to measure uh, six inches in width. So we're going to cut it at six inches and what I like to do is to cut it on one side and then I like to flip it over and then I like to cut it on the second side and you'll find that it just um, breaks off quite easily and you'll have you know your nice neat surface there. Now on the other measurement here we're going to cut it at four and a half inches so it's four and a half inches in width by six inches in depth. So we're just going to flip that up and then we We'll cut the back and there we go so that just breaks off really easily and I'll keep those because we've got some other projects coming up in the next month or two that'll use smaller pieces of chipboard so don't get rid of those okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to change that blade again so we're just going to go down to that little opening and we're just going to rock it backwards and forwards over that opening and you'll see that the blade just pops out just pops pops straight out come on let you come there you go so I'm just going to pop that back in my little bag so that I know I know what that one's for. And then I'm just going to put my ordinary blade back in. There we go. Super simple, isn't it? Okay, so now we need to cut one of uh, designer series paper for the front. And then we need to cut one for cardstock for the back. So the same measurements, four and a half inches by six. Now I've chosen to go with this gorgeous paper. This is one in the Simply Elegant range. Now remember, uh, if you're a member of Feast Craft Club, we're still using these papers this month. The packs um, left last week for next month. So I can't wait to start using those with you. So we're using the Nature's Harvest range of products next month. Uh, if you'd like to join in, we do have a couple of spare packs. So you can go to fifiandme.com. And you can find them in the paper craft section there um, if you want to sign up for the September lot of uh, projects. It's a lot of fun just to play along and it gives you a chance to get your hands on some of the products for a very you know inexpensive amount of money really. Okay, so this is already six inches, remember, because we're using um, 
six inch square, but I'll just check the measurement and I'll just give it a little trim up just in case it's a little bit off. It was just a whisker, you can see there. Um, now we want the pattern, because this is a patterned piece of paper, we want to make sure that pattern is going in the right direction. So we're going to cut it down to four and a half inches. Actually, I should make sure that that's six inches that way too, shouldn't I? Do that fee because you'll regret it if you don't. And now I've got a bit of paper stuck down in my channel. Simply using my take your pick tool. It's useful for so many things, this thing. Okay, so we want the pattern to go up, up and down. You can decide which way you want it, but that's how I want mine. So I'm going to cut it at four and a half because that's going to be my piece there for the front. Okay, uh, and I'm now going to cut the piece of DSP that's going to go onto the front of my little post-it note pack and that's going to be a three inch square. So I'm just going to cut that down to three inches and then we'll cross cut to three inches again. So that little piece there is my three inches. Now I'm going to pop all of my leftovers into my little pack so I can use them in the rest of my projects and I've got it all in one spot. Okay, so that's the DSP cut. Now we're going to cut our cardstock. So the first piece that we might cut uh, will be the piece for the back. So we're going to cut it at four and a half inches. Okay, and then we are going to turn it around and we're going to cut it at six. Okay, so that's our piece there for the back. All right, pop that to the side. Now we're going to cut the cover for the little post-it note pack. And the measurement for that is going to be six and three quarters by three and a quarter. So we're going to go to three and a quarter. Pop this bit off to the side. We'll use some of that for stamping. And then we're going to extend the arm out on our cutter and go to the six and three quarter mark and trim it down. And now we do need to do a tiny bit of scoring on this. So the scoring is at three and a quarter. So we'll put our blade up out of the way. This, part, this little light gray one here, if you're not um, aware, is our scoring tool on our cutter. So it's fantastic. So we're just gonna go up and back at three and a quarter and that'll give us our score line. And then we're gonna move it along to three and a half inches and then we're gonna do the same thing. Just two little score marks. And you'll see there now that you've got your two little indentations with G scores and I've got a little bit of a bend on there, but that's okay. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to make a pencil loop. So we'll bring back in um, the little piece that we cut off the end and we need this to be three and a quarter inches in length. Okay, so we'll bring the cutter, so I've got another little scrap there and then we only need it to be an inch and a half in width. So there we go, so that's what it's going to look like. But we do need to do a little bit of scoring. We're going to score it at one and one eighth now this will fit most pencils and pens, but do try, do one of these up first um, and see whether or not it's going to be right, but we can alter it when it comes to the gluing stage. So that's at one and one eighth, and then we're going to move it along to two and one eighth. And then we're going to score it again. Okay. Now, of course, all of this will be in the download for Feast Craft Club members, so you won't have to worry about writing down all of that. So let me just run through now what you should have. You should have some uh, plain paper left over for your stamping. Now in this case, I'm using very vanilla. You should also have your post-it note cover with the scoring in the middle. And then you should also have a piece of designer series paper that is gonna go on the front of that there like that. Then you'll have your piece of chipboard, your piece of designer series paper, and also you will have the back part of your cardboard to go on the back to give it a nice look and then you're also going to have your pencil loop so let's start putting this together um, try and find a glue that's got a fair bit of glue in it because it's going to take a little bit okay so we will first off pop the cardstock onto the back of our piece of chipboard okay And I like to just bang it on, down onto the um, table just to make sure that we've got it level. 
and we can use our bone folder just to give it a bit of a smooth over, make sure we've got it all adhered lovely. And then we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing to the front. Now when you're applying your glue, just don't go too close to the edges because it will spill out a little bit. So just come back from the edge a little bit and uh, then when you're using your scoring, your bone folder, um, it'll help spread the glue to the edges. Okay, so we'll just use it on the table there, make sure we've got, we've got it all nice and flush on one side. And then we'll just use, use that to smooth it over. Look at that. So you can see I have got a little bit of glue here off um, the edges. And that's because I probably went a little bit close. So lesson learned there for you. Just be very careful with that. Grab myself a baby wipe. I'll just give it a little bit of a bath, make sure I don't have it all over the place. Okay. Right, so what we can do next, I do suggest that you do your stamping next. So whatever it is that you're going to put up the top here as a feature, um, you can do next. But uh, I am just going to do a very bit of plain stamping. Um, I'm just trying to find... A decent stamp set to use. I was going to use Elegantly Said. I think I will. So this is the one that goes with their papers. Um, and we might actually just do this beautiful, um, elegant looking thing there. Whatever that is. And we might do it on an angle at the top. So let me just see. Now this is the die that I've chosen. Because I thought that that would fit there just beautifully. Yep, yeah, it's probably going to go off the edges a little bit, but that won't matter. Okay, so I'm going to grab a block. I need a fairly large block for this one. Now you can do this with the Stamparatus if you're worried about getting it uh, even, and ordinarily I probably would. Actually, I will. Let's do that. I can see it. It's off to my side here, so... Let's be exact about this. I know a few of you um, are just learning with the Stamparatus, so it's a good opportunity to show you again what we do in this instance. Okay, so we open up our Stamparatus. Now you can move the uh, door if you want to go vertically or horizontally. It just depends on what you want to do. So we pop our card stock into, into the body of it and you can use your magnets. Now I've put washi tape on my magnets to make it easier for me to pick them up because they're very, very strong. Then you can decide where you want your stamp. And I'm just going to pop it down the bottom just down here just because I want to try to save as much um, card stock as I can. Then you just close the window, the door, I suppose you call it. And then that picks up your stamp. And so then now all you need to do is to ink it. So you've got to choose a colour. I'm going to go with... Um, I'm going to go with basic grey. And then you just ink up your stamp. Just like that. Now if you miss any bits, you can go back and fix it in a moment. And I'll show you how. So you just close that off. Now I know that a lot of people use something to roll across the top or to weight it down, but I just use my hand. There we go. Now you can see that it is quite faint in a few areas. So what we're going to do is we're just going to re-stamp it. Now of course because we've used the magnets and the door, it's going to re-stamp in exactly the same spot again. So we don't have to worry about it misstamping. There we go. And look how dark and gorgeous that is now. So if I'd have done it on the block, I probably would have been disappointed with the, the look of my um, stamped image. But because I've used the Stamparatus, uh, I have now have a perfect image. So it's pretty cool, isn't it? I really like it. And I don't use it as often as I should. I should use it more often because there are so many cool things that you can do with it. And in the coming months, we can investigate those and teach you some of those. But uh, while a lot of you are still starting out, I didn't want to overwhelm you with too many products that you might feel that you need to have. Um, it really is an extra, but it is a handy extra. And it does save you money in the long run because you're not wasting 
cardstock where you've misstamped something. So there's that to it as well. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to grab our little cutter. Now, of course, of course I'll drop stuff on the floor because that's what I do. Just a moment. <laughs> right. Okay, so what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is I'm going to chop this down with my scissors. I'll just get rid of a bit of that. Okay, so I'm bringing in my, my little baby cutter. Now, as I mentioned, this is from the Stitch So Sweetly Dies. Um, and we have lots of different sizes of this beautiful rectangle. They remind me of uh, a biscuit we have here in Australia called a Nice Biscuit. It's a little sweet biscuit with sugar all over the top. And it's got a crinkly edge like this little cutter. And that's what it reminds me of. Every time I see them, I think of Nice Biscuits. So we're going to use a sticky note. This seems to be my uh, thing of choice these days to hold my die in place. You can also use washi tape if you wish. And then we just run it through the cutter. And it's so simple to use. I've sold a lot of these to my new customers lately and um, I know that they're very, very thrilled with them. They're fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, so there we have now, look, our beautiful stamped image and it's been cut out absolutely stunningly. And so now we can glue that onto the top of our, our little note holder. So we're just going to pop a bit of glue on the back of that. And I'm just going to centre that on the top there. So as I said, it doesn't have to be anything flash. You can pop some flowers on there if you've got some die cuts, whatever you want to put on there. But I'm just going to go with a simple stamping technique on that today. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is to make our little pencil holder. Now, let me show you my pencils. I managed to get these from Kmart. Now, um, they're not available online at the moment. I did have a look before I came on. It says uh, coming again soon. They do have a darker version of these available that they've got marked down. This is the pastel version. They were $4 uh, and we've got 12 uh, pencils. So they're very economical, but this will work with pens, mechanical pencils, whatever it is that you want to use. Now, um, of course, I'm using a grey and a gold, and I'm thinking I might actually pick up this goldy-looking pencil to coordinate. What do you think? I think that looks okay. So that's the one that we will use. So you can decide whether or not you use a pencil or a pen or whatever it is. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to get our old burn folder, and we're just going to fold over where we've scored it, Okay, now this section here in the middle, so we've got this piece on one side and this piece on the other, but the piece in the middle, I want you to get your bone folder and I want you to curl it. I Just get your bone folder and just run it along there and as you're doing it, hopefully you can see what I'm doing, I'm curling it. Can you see what I'm doing? And what I'm actually doing is crushing the fibres in that cardstock so that it is no longer... Uh, flat that it is now actually curved. Can you see? So you can see on this end here it needs a little bit more work. So it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a curl with your bone folder. Now if you've ever thought to yourself, I don't need a bone folder, I can just use whatever I've got. You do need a bone folder because they make these sort of jobs so much easier. You'll find it very difficult to get that beautiful smooth look without a bone folder. These are made of Teflon. So it has a unique um, edge and a smoothness to it that helps to smooth out the fibres in the paper. So it's not just um, we're telling you to use a, a bone folder just for the sake of it. it. It really does have a purpose. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to pop some glue from the score line back. Okay, on one side, just like that. And then we're going to get the two ends here to meet so that you are gluing both of the sides. Now what I like to do at this point is to put my pencil or pen or whatever it is you're going to be using in because you want to make sure that you're gluing right to that score line and you can see there that it fits the pencil 
quite snugly. I mean, you can still move the pencil up and down. It's not super tight. But you can see that when I take my fingers away that the cardboard starts to part. So what we need to do is we need to actually clip that for a couple of seconds and to make sure that we're going to get a really nice, strong glue right to those edges. Uh, now, where's my other clip? There it is there. Okay, so this is really quite an important little step because uh, unless you get this pencil loop right, your, your little um, holder is just not going to look professional. It's going to look dodgy. And we don't want that. We want it to look really, really cute. Okay, so that's what you need to do. So just pop that off to the side for the moment. And now we're going to take our piece of cardstock that we've already uh, got our lines in ready to be used with the bone folder. So you can see that what I've done is I've folded them over and of course the bone folder crushes them and makes them sit and behave themselves along that line perfectly. And that's why we do the scoring and that's what we're doing the bone folder step with. So, so that's it there. Okay, so decide which part of it is going to be the front of your little post-it note pack. And for me, it's going to be this side. And now I'm going to glue my piece of uh, designer series paper, which is, remember, three inches square. And we're going to glue that to the front. And you'll have enough um, for a border all the way around. You've got a quarter of an inch. So you've got that nice, that nice little bit there. Okay, so what we're going to do next is to get our post-it note pack. And I don't have anything, um, actually I do have a yellow one, that'll probably go better with the colour. I was going to say I don't have one that coordinates, but the yellow one probably, probably goes better. Okay, so on the side where you have the backing paper, where the post-it note logo and things are, we're going to pop some glue. So I'm just going to run the glue all the way over that. And then we're going to pop that. So remember, that's where your DSP is on the top there. And the square down the bottom, we're going to pop our post-it note in there. Now we're going to pop it up fairly close to that first score line. Okay. And then we're going to turn it over. We're going to use our bone folder again. And we're just going to run it along. Make sure that it's all adhered. Now the beauty of this is that whoever you give this to, if they run out of notes, pieces of paper, they can just put a new one in. Because the post-it notes, each page has the glue, they can just stick a whole new one in here and it'll be absolutely fine, it'll hold. Um, what we're going to do is actually pop a tiny bit of glue along the top here. And excuse the dogs barking, um, it's that time of the day when my husband's walking them and... Uh, I've just recently moved my studio to the back of the house and uh, I get all the noise. So I do apologise for that, if you can hear them. Okay, so we're going to run our bone folder along there, just like that. And that's it. So I'm going to pop that off to the side. I'm going to stick a punch on top, just for a couple of minutes, just to give it a bit of a dry. And now we're going to take the same colour ink that we used uh, on our stamping at the top of our little holder. So I'm going to be using the basic grey. I'll just pop that up out of the way for the moment. Um, and we're going to do two things. We're going to stamp a sentiment for the front of the post-it note. Now you can leave it blank if you wish. I'm going to be using a stamp um, that comes, I'm just looking to see where it is here, it comes in a set, well it did come in a set I should say, uh, it was a paper pumpkin set called Joy to the World and it had one in there called Just a Little Note and I absolutely love that little sentiment and I pop it on all my notebooks. There was also a stamp set a little while ago that had butterflies and I can't think of the name of it without getting up from the desk and going over to the shelf and getting it off. But it also had one in it that said just a little note. I love that sentiment. I just think it's it's super cool. And so that's uh, what I've used on mine. Of course, I'm going to be taking these to um, a few of my major Christmas markets that I'm doing. And um, so I have lots and lots and lots of these already prepped and ready to go, ready for me to sit and make because um, I have lots of chipboard that I need to use up, so it's a win-win. Oh, I don't know why I'm putting that away, because I actually need that. So the other thing that we're going to do now is we are going to grab a sponge dauber. 
just grab my sponge dauber storage box here and I'm going to use a new one and I'm going to take our board and I'm just going to ink up all of these edges. Now this, uh, this part can be a little bit time consuming but if you can see the difference between uninked and inked, you'll see that it's worth it's worth the effort because you just you get that beautiful finished look. Because look at that side there now. Now that looks gorgeous. Turn it over, mm, not so pretty. So take the effort just to do the little bits. Because it really is worth doing. Okay, so we'll just do the top and the bottom now. I'm so thrilled with my sponge dauber tin because I I lose stuff all the time and when I moved my paper craft room I had stuff everywhere I mean in different spots no wonder I could never find anything so now I've bought lots of different types of organizational type of things like that so all of my sponge daubers are in the one spot and I can just pick them up and I know exactly where they are and they all have uh, you know different color family so this one obviously is a gray one now so yeah I love them and I do feel much more organized although I still have stuff where I don't know where it is but anyway that's always going to be me okay so you can see there now that it's all inked and it looks gorgeous and it doesn't affect the back of it at all it still looks fantastic okay so we're going to take our everyday label punch which is the one that I've chosen to use and we're just going to punch out that little uh, sentiment there now it doesn't if you've got this um, one it doesn't sort of quite fit if you go down too low with the L um, but it doesn't fit too bad at all and you all know how much I love punches they make life so easy okay so I'm going to actually pop that up on dimensionals which I like a bit of uh, dimension on that just to make it look a little bit prettier so we're just going to pop some of those on never underestimate uh, what these can do for a project they give that 3D look, which is, um, this is a 3D project, so having the 3D look is great. Oops, off you come. Okay, so I'm just going to centre that on my little post-it note pack. It's not really centred, Fee. Come on, lift your game. Righty-ho. Now what are we going to use for bling because we need bling of course we need bling so i'm going to use some of these brushed metallic adhesive back dots now these are coming in the september pack for you to try uh they're lovely they're really lovely they've got lots of lots of bling on them which is good um and i'm just going to pop that down there and the on the bottom there so we just need the one. We're not going to go overboard. You could put some at the top here if you wanted to, but I'm just going to leave it. Okay, so the time to put this little baby together is here. Now you can see that I've got a nice sort of gap around. Um, we're going to be putting this down here flush. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip this over. We're going to take our little pencil holder and we're going to glue this to the back of our post-it note holder. Okay. So... Just going to center it around about where you think the center is. Oops, and I've put it on the wrong side. Don't do that. I want to go on this side. Well, you could put it on the other side, I suppose, but I want it on the other side. Okay, cool. Right, now we're going to pop some glue. So it doesn't matter I've got glue there because we're going to put glue all over it. Noisy, noisy dogs. Okay, so we're going to... Center that down the bottom here so you can see that this is going to be flush with the bottom. So I'm just going to use my bone folder, make sure that I'm giving that a really good press. I'm going to go down the edge here, make sure we're giving that a good press. Right down here as well. And look at that. I'm just going to, I notice that the glue hasn't dried at the top of the post-it note, so we're just going to run that along the top there. And now what you can do is lift up your post-it notes and then just give it a bit of a burnish here. But I like to pop something heavy on it anyway, 
for 10 minutes or so just to make sure you get a good adhesion and it makes the top of that sit down as well. We've got one step left. We're going to um, apply some magnetic uh, strip or whatever. Now you can use um, advertising magnets or whatever you want, um, but you can just pop your little bit of magnet on the back and I've tested this, it sticks to the fridge beautifully, absolutely beautifully, you don't need any more than that. Uh, and then we're going to pop our pencil in, I might pop it um, that way, and there we go. Look at that, isn't that a gorgeous gift to give to somebody? Absolutely gorgeous. And as I said, they're perfect for craft markets. So. I hope that you've enjoyed today's little tutorial. If you aren't already uh, a member of Fees Craft Club on Facebook, come and join us. We have lots of fun over there. We have a giveaway most weeks. We've got a giveaway over there at the moment. Um, and, yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't already got a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you live in Australia, please come and have a look at my store, um, craftwithfee.com. You'll find a link there. Don't forget, if you're going to purchase from me, to enter the hostess code because that will entitle you to a free make-and-take class. Anyway, that's it from me for today. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.